everyone, I'm Tony from Intel. Today I will give a talk on Croc Pro Plus, improving Croc Pro cache replacement with utility of driven adaptation. Here is the outline of my talk. First, we will give a brief introduction to cache and page replacement. Next, we will present the background, the two state-of-the-art policies. Then we will propose our new policy to improve Croc Pro with utility driven adaptation. After showing the experimental results, we will give the concluding remarks. Buffer cache replacement determines the victim to be replaced given a new data block to be loaded. Many policies have been proposed. Those policies, those policies manipulate the data structure when there is a cache hit. This introduces a log containment problem when a low hit latency is required, for example, in the problem of page replacement with virtual memory management. To resolve the log containment problem, clock is a coarse grain LRU stack without the exact access order. If a page in the clock is accessed, we set a reference bit of it. Then given a new page coming in, we will examine the LRU pages with the hand. Any reference bit set on those LRU pages gets reset. However, the hand will stop at the page without the reference bit set, and this becomes the replacement victim. Crop Pro use reuse distance, that is the distance of a page away from the top as the matrix. It is assumed that if a page with, is with a low reuse distance, then it is more likely to be accessed in the future. Crop Pro efficiently discriminate hot pages with low reuse distances from cold pages with high reuse distances. It is then approximating to the state-of-the-art LIRS policy, but also incorporates an adaptive mechanism to fit for LRU-friendly workloads. <coughs> In Croc Pro, there are three types of cache entries, and the three hands pointing to the LRU entries. A newly incoming page is tagged as a resident code page, we use the hand code to evict the LRU code page. After it, the page gets evicted, it becomes a non-resident code page, which is a shadow cache entry with the metadata kept, but the data ten content is cutted. So when there is then access to a resident code page or non-resident code pages in its test period, we see a smaller reuse distance versus that of the LRU hot page. This will trigger a promotion of the code page to its hot status and the demotion of a hot, the LRU hot page to the code status, it, along with the page move. There are two cases where the test period of a non-resident code page gets expired. One case is for the page that stay beyond the LRU hot page. And the other case is that when there are many new pages coming in, we need to limit the clock size by, by eliminating those LRU test pages. By default, Croc Pro devotes only 1% of its cache space to the resident code pages. So there are a small number of resident code pages stays close to the head position. After that, non-resident code pages are interleaved with the hot pages. When reuse distance is not a good predictor, or it even does not exist when it is a newly incoming page, frequent accesses to those close to head non-resident code pages result in misses. Those misses can be easily captured with a basic clock policy. A typical example is the stack depth distribution workflow. So in short, clock pro without adaptation is not good enough in those cases. Croc Pro incorporates a simple adaptive mechanism. The idea is to guess whether the workload is LRU friendly or not. If there is an access to, to a resident or non-resident code page, it is regarded as LRU friendly. If it sees that there are test, test page expired, then it assumes that it is not LRU friendly and it needs more code pages to extend the test period. The heuristic is simple, but is without utility analysis. For example, 
if there are accesses to those resident code pages, those are patch hits, and it is not necessary to increase code page number. And when there are many test pages expired, incorporating more hot pages may not help. That is to say, Cloud Pro without a back paging is still not good enough. <clears throat> Cloud with adaptive replacement or CAP is another state of the art policy. It argues that recency and frequency are two factors varying and requiring dynamic adaptation. As the approximation of ARC policy, CAR maintains two different clocks and two shadow lists. One clock and one shadow list for recency, that is, page with one recent access. Another clock and a shadow list for frequency, that is, pages with at least two recent accesses. It performs utility-driven adaptation to dynamically adjust the size of the two clocks. <coughs> In CAR, we maintain the same number of catch entries, shadow entries, frequency entries, and recency entries. When there is an excess in the recency shadow list, growing the recency clock size by one is likely to convert the excess into a hit. We calculate its pro probability as the incremental utility of doing so. When there is an excess of the uh, frequency shadow list, growing the frequency clock size by one is likely to convert the excess into a hit. Again, we calculate the probability as the incremental utility of doing so. So when there is an excess in the recency shadow list, we need to grow the size of the recency crop. We compare the two utilities and decide the exact size to grow. At the minimum, we grow its size by one. Similarly, we do the same thing for the freezing frequency crop. CAR adapts well to LRU-friendly workloads. However, it, the frequency clock and the shadow list contains less granular information. Without a fine grain matrix like reuse distance, it is less capable in capturing the repeated access with relatively long temporal distances, that is, weak locality. In that sense, CAR is not good enough as well. So here we give a quick glance in competing the two policies on a set of selected configurations. As we can see that sometimes Crop Pro outperforms CAR substantially, and sometimes vice versa. There is no consistent winner between the two. Inspired by CAR, we improved the dynamic catch, uh, space allocation in Crop Pro with a CAR style utility evaluation. Similar to Crop Pro, when the reuse distance is not a good predictor, we allocate more space to hot pages. When it, is a good, uh, when it is not a good predictor, we allocate more spaces to code pages. To determine whether it is a good predictor or not, we look into two cases. The first is accessing the non-resident code pages. The other is an appropriate demotion of the hot page, that is, a demoted page hit shortly after demotion. To do so, we need to attach a demotion bit to each of the resident code pages. We also need to track the current number of <coughs> resident code, non-resident code pages and demoted pages. So when there is an excess on the non-resident code page, growing the code page size by one is likely to convert the excess into a hit. We calculate the probability as the utility of weeks. When we observe a hit on a demoted page, Growing the hot page size by one is likely to, to prevent this inappropriate demotion. We, again, we calculate the probability as the utility of doing so. So when there is an excess on the non-resident code page, we need to grow the size of the resident code pages. We, ca we compare the two utilities to determine the exact size to grow. At minimum, we grow its size by one. And when we observe a hit on a demoted page, we need to grow the hot page size. Again, we compare the utility of the two utility values to determine the exact size to grow. At the minimum, we grow its size by one. Trace-driven simulation is performed to evaluate the performance. We use the IO traces from the UMass trace repository. 
To investigate how well the policy adapts to the LRU friendly workload, we also create a synthetic trace from from a step depth distribution. We vary the catch size and fix the shadow number entry to be the same as the catch entry. We perform a comparative study on heat ratios on crop pro, TAR, and crop pro plus. As we can see from the experimental results. In some, in some cases, our new policy, Crop Pro Plus, retain the Crop Pro strength for those web search traces. And at the same time, it overcomes the Crop Pro's weaknesses, bringing its performance close to cut in the financial and SDD traces. That is to say, Crop Pro Plus performs close to the winner between the two. For the interest of time, uh, I will not introduce an ablation study on the effects of the adaptation, and we will also not uh, introduce the, the case study, but uh, the information is in the paper. So to conclude, we propose a novel improvement to crop pro. We borrow the idea from CA and use the utility-driven adaptation to improve the catch space allocation in crop pro. The new crop pro plus policy enjoys the strengths of Crop Pro and Ta, overcomes their weaknesses, and performs consistently close to the winner between the two. So that's the end of my talk. Any questions or comments are welcome. Thank you. Any questions? So I have a small question. Have you uh, had a chance to compare this uh, New policy to uh, to any other uh, caching policies uh, rather than just uh, car and crop pro. Uh, so actually, I have not done that, but I think uh, uh, today there are not a lot of crop policies there specifically. Okay. So how actually test the traces more than just Yeah, I think there are some uh, large I.O. traces, but today I, did, I still have not enough time to do that yet. I think I will perform that evaluation in the future. Thank you. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>